Welcome YouTube. Welcome back to Sin City Living. Today we're going to talk about an interesting variation of the Iron Cross that I have come across. I can't say recently. I've seen this played quite a bit by uh, by one or two people. One person in particular like really likes to play this uh, this variation that I've seen. It's definitely an interesting one. The Iron Cross is an interesting. Uh, uh, interesting strategy in that it's it's most definitely a grinder strategy. You're just trying to play for as long as you can. Uh, maybe win if you catch a, a hot roll. You're not going to win enormous amounts of money unless you cross unless you combine the iron cross with uh, with some of the power press methods or mid press methods that we've shown you in the past. But uh, but it is an interesting method that that uh, I've seen have some success. The thing about the iron cross or really any other kind of method is that you're really just looking for one decent roll. You don't want to keep chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing. The only people that I ever see win at craps, regardless of what strategy they use, are the ones that catch a decent roll, make uh, double, triple uh, their initial buy-in, color up, leave. The ones that chase, oh, I bought in for 100 bucks, I've got 300 bucks. Well, if this is 300 bucks, I should be able to turn it into 900 bucks then. That just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Overall, over any length of time, the odds are going to smooth out. So if you catch that, that, uh, that roll that just breaks the odds, you need to ride it. You need to ride it, make your money, and then leave. Don't continue trying to chase. So just as a quick recap, the Iron Cross is betting on the 5, the 6, and the 8. The classic Iron Cross would be two units each, and then you're going to do one unit on the field. And the reason for this is the 5, the 6, and the 8 are the only numbers that are not on the field, aside from the 7 that, of course, loses on everything. So by doing this method, you are winning on every roll of the dice that is not a 7 that causes everybody to lose. So any of the field numbers here roll, you win 5 bucks, 10 if it's a 2 or 12 or on tables where it's a triple, 15 if it's a 12. On these numbers, you're going to win $14. You're going to lose this, so you'll win nine bucks. So no matter what, you're winning either $5 or $9. That is the idea behind the Iron Cross. Now, when Louis did the, uh, the review of the Iron Cross, he did show you about uh, how you might want to start pressing. If you catch a decent roll, use the Iron Cross, use the field to turn into an entire cross bet, and then keep going from there. So I want to show you this interesting variation of the Iron Cross. It's going to take a little bit more money to start with. But what you're going to do is you're going to set up a $30 5 and a $36 6 and a $36 8. Now it does not matter what the point is. The point could very well be the 6. It does not matter. You would still set it up including the point. Okay, so we're going to pretend the point is a 9. Now, Next, we're going to do a $21 field bet. Now, here's the way this works. All three of these, 30, 36, 36, all three of these pay $42. $42 minus the 21 that is losing here means it wins $21. Or, if it's not one of these numbers that rolls, but it's a field number, it wins $21 accepting those rare cases where it's a 2 or a 12, but you have a 1 in 36 chance of hitting a 2 or 1 in 36 chance of hitting a 12. So each time the dice roll, you'll win $21 in theory. Now, the way that I've seen this played is after two rolls, regardless of what happens, be it two field rolls, be it two of these numbers, or one of each, at that point, the player has won $42. So. Let's just, uh, we'll ignore a seven if it comes out and let's just see what happens, okay? So an eight. So with an eight, we're gonna lose right here and we're gonna pay it $42. All right, so the player will win $42. They'll set up another $21 field bet. Now another eight rolls. So they'll lose right here. and they'll win $42. Now, at this point, the player has won $42. So what they're going to do is they are going to give us 44. So we will give them one change. They will take all these bets down 
and they will tell us that they want 44 inside. Okay. Now, theoretically, at this point, they've only spent two dollars. Now, since they've taken their initial bets back and they've won forty-two dollars, they've only spent two dollars to get these bets. Now, at this point, anything that rolls, they're going to to do maybe a small press. Maybe they'll collect the first time, then they'll do a small press afterwards. Press one unit is what I usually see. Uh, once they get these up a little bit, maybe they'll start adding a four and ten in there as numbers hit. Because uh, the player feels that they'll get their two rolls in, and then they basically have a free bet. That's their theory. Uh, in reality, it doesn't end up working out that way most of the time, um, or at least a third of the time it won't work out that way. But from here now, they start doing some minor presses. And the thing about this is this is ignoring the fact that one in six times, a seven is going to be the very first roll after you set up your, your bet. One in six times, it's going to be the second roll. So one in six times, you're just going to immediately lose your $123 initial bet of your 36, 36, 30, and 21. One in six times, you're out $123. One in six times, you're going to win 21 and lose. So you're going to be out $102. So a third of the time, you're going to lose over $100. Now, a third of the time, one in six times, a seven's going to come right here, right after they've taken all their bets down, and they've gone ahead and done your 44 inside. So now they've only lost $2. So roughly half the time, you're going to lose everything between $2 to $102 to $123. Half the time, roughly half the time. Now, if, uh, um, if it hits that fourth roll with no seven, at this point, you started to make a little bit of money. You're not going to make a whole lot. This is going to pay 14. Um, really, everything's going to pay 14. If you do any kind of minor press, then you've, even just pressing one unit, then you've made eight or nine dollars. When you subtract the two dollars you had to throw in for this, you're basically making six or seven dollars on that fourth roll. So in order for this method to start seeing any kind of decent profit, you have to hit five, six, or more rolls without a seven. Now that's statistically unlikely to happen a lot. It can happen, of course it can happen. We've seen 100 rolls without, uh, without a seven. That's ungodly rare, but it does certainly happen. But we've also seen 15 players that do 0.7 out, 0.7 out, 0.7 out, 0.7 out, 0 .7 out, 0 .7 out. So anything can happen, obviously. And like any method with craps, what you're looking for is you're just looking for that good roll, that decent roll. The player that I see play this one the most, to be completely honest, I've seen this player win maybe twice, so maybe one in 30 times they play. And by win, I mean win more than $20. Um, I have seen, because this player usually buys in for between three to $500, because again, your initial outlay is $123. So if you want to see just four hands, you're going to have to buy in for a decent amount of money. Um, this player, I would say one in three times, I see them buy back in within 15, 20 minutes for another three or $400. Um, other times I see them manage to grind out. It all depends on your, on your timing. How lucky do you get? Do you come in right as the dice are turning and, you, and you're going to have a whole string of players that roll five, six, seven numbers before hitting the seven out? Or are you coming in and you've just hit that ice cold table that's point out, point out, point number out? Um, that's going to that's gonna make a huge, huge, huge difference. The player that I see play this does have a tendency to bounce, table, bounce around tables a lot. Once he usually once he loses his initial outlay twice in a row, he'll he'll move on he'll move on to a different table and try it again somewhere else. Uh, this is like I said, this is a pure grinder method. You are not trying to win a whole lot of money because again, it takes getting to the fifth or the sixth roll without a seven to start making a profit. And at this point, your profit is tiny. Profit is eight to twenty dollars if you're doing some minor presses. Even if you're just taking same bet, your profit is only twenty-eight to, to forty-two dollars. You're not making a whole lot of profit on this at all. Um, 
in, in reality, when you're doing something like this, you're almost starting to look at, at trying to turn dice into a job where all you're trying to do is make 14 or $28 an hour. I mean, you're trying to have basically two, two of those roles where you win a decent amount of money, um, that, where you win just, just 14 or $28. You just hit two or three of these. Um, that, and that, of course, is not counting all the times you have to do that to make up for the $123 you lose when it's an, an, an immediate point seven out or the $102 you lose when it's immediately a point, a number, and then a seven out. So in, in general, I, I see this one as just, just grinding away, grind away, grind away. You don't, see, you don't see people make a whole ton of money off of this, this, uh, this method. In fact, this method is, I'm not gonna say it's the, the um, worst method I've ever seen, because Iron Cross is not a horrible method. This is an interesting method. But it's not a horrible method. Uh, but this one does make dealers roll their eyes because it's the, the idea here is, is the player seems to think that they get a free bet and that it's, it's, it's unbeatable, it's hedging itself, but when in reality, a third of the time, it's going to lose over $100 right away. Right away. Um, it can be, become a fun, fun thing to, to deal to. If you get one of those 20, 30, 30 roll uh, uh, hands, something where it's going for, for a decent length of time, so that you can start pressing these up and, and, and getting these moving. Because again, it's a free bet. As far as free bets go, I'm not a big fan of this one. There is a, a, uh, there is a better bet. There, there is a, another type of regressive, which, uh, which I believe Louis has gone over in one of his videos. But it's the one where you go completely across, go 160 across. And any number that hits, any number that hits, regardless of what, what hits, you take everything down and you go 32 across inside, or 32 across including. Um, because at that point, theoretically, you're now operating on free money. Uh, you're operating, because the, the lowest anything pays is $35, so you've got a $3 profit. So this method right here just requires you to survive one roll. If it's one of these numbers, if it happens to be a horn number, 2, 3, 11, or 12, then you make nothing. You have to go to a second roll. But if you manage to hit this one, just a single one of them, then you drop it down, go to 32, go to 32 inside, or 32, I keep saying inside, go to 32 across, including, take all the rest of it down. And now you're, right, now you're sitting on a $3 profit at worst. If it happened to be the 4 or 10 that hit, you're sitting on a $17 profit. And now you can, of course, press up from here. This is, is to me, a slightly better version of, of trying to get a free bet out of the, uh, out of the casino because uh, it only requires a one hit while you've got maybe $30 more at risk, um, although you are missing out on the 2, 3, the 11, and 12 if they happen to happen to roll. The reason I'm not a fan of this, I'm not a fan of any regression-type strategy because, to me, the goal is to hit your hot roll. You want to just be pressing, 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 pulling, pulling, pulling money, press, pull, press, pull. So you don't want to ever take your bets down in the middle of a hot roll. That, to, to me, that makes no sense. You want to keep trying to win more money. There, you know, they've got that old saying that a lot of uh, gamblers will say. Typically, I've noticed it's gamblers that are really not very good gamblers or gamblers that don't actually gamble, but the whole uh, uh, scared money doesn't make money thing. And, in a way, it's kind of true. You don't want to gamble with more than you're afraid to lose. When I go to the casino, I go to the casino with a set amount of money that I could literally wad up and fill into the trash can. I actually saw this the other day. I saw somebody get up to I believe it was something like this. They they had caught a decent roll. The the all the numbers were rolling at a fairly good clip. We were probably we're maybe five minutes into the hand. They've rolled maybe eight or nine times, but the six rolled quite a few times. The six rolled a whole bunch, and so did the five. Six of five were hitting a lot. Ten hadn't hit at all, because I remember they started out fifty four across. Um, eight hit maybe twice, but the five and six were were really going. We're maybe like I said, five six minutes into this hand. What does the player decide to do? The player decides to come down. 
to 27 across. So what, what ends up happening? Six, seven minutes later, these bets are pressed right back up to where those were. The player decides to come down to 27 across. And this hand goes on for another 15 or so minutes. This was a 25 to 30 minute roll. The player did win. The player ended up coloring up. They had an initial buy-in of a couple hundred. They ended up coloring up maybe five, six hundred. And, uh, and they were happy. They, they more than tripled up their money. So they were happy and they, they took off happy. Um, although about two hours later they came back and lost it all, all over again. But there was another player at the table that never once took their bets down. Just continued doing small presses. They, they didn't do crazy presses, but they did small presses. And this player had bought in for $100 and ended up coloring up somewhere around $4,000. Because they didn't drop their bets down. Don't press if you're afraid to actually let your bets be gambled. You know, if you're going to end up taking your bets down because you're scared of it, then don't press to begin with. Keep your bets at something you're comfortable with and continue to collect the money. That way you don't get quite the same uh, aw shucks feeling that you'll get if you, man if you end up losing, if you end up going to this crazy roll and you end up winning next to nothing because of it. Uh, but that was my variation, not my variation, that was a variation of the Iron Cross that I've come across. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Please hit the like and subscribe button and we will see you next time.